Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, time for another Iconics Metal Earth kit. Those are the larger kits. I've done one so far, it's the Millennium Falcon. Today, I'm putting together the H2R Kawasaki Ninja. And I've never built a bike before. This will be a first. This looks to have a little bit of green inside or on it, inside the box, what have you. But let's open this up. See what's inside, see if I get a new set of tweezers. H2R Kawasaki Ninja. <laughs> Metal. Instructions. Extra doodads. Looks like I do get another set of tweezers. How nifty. And of course, instructions. We'll open that up here in a minute. And looks like they've decided to tape these down. Two metal sheets. Two silver metal sheets I should say. Lots of nifty parts. Look lights. And down here we have the we have the thing. We have the green metal sheet. It's sealed up here. Oh, if we get to play a game, can we get this out without break, bending the metal? Ah, there we go. Well, I'm not sure, but I think these are the green pieces. So yeah, let's put that to the side. And let's look at the instructions. We have, looks like two pieces of paper. And this. Is page one and very much like the metal earth kits you have a diagram of the kit built you have to create the best connections you have the key or legend with the blue circle for bending over tabs green triangle means to twist them so when you see those in the directions beside the connections you'll know whether or not they intend you to twist or bend them over and there's some information about fold lines, tabs, slots, and you know those pliers are helpful for assembly. We have one of the metal sheets here. So that's one metal sheet and it has numbers for all the different parts. And this is one of the ones that same the same kind of parts are colored the same so that they only have to point to one. Here is 30. This is also 30. So that's nice. Let's open this up. Page two. We have the other large metal sheet and the little green one, it looks like. There we go. And here we begin the assembly steps. Step one, step two, step three. And they show the part numbers for the different parts as you assemble them. And then three is larger and you just follow the arrows in this case they seem to be pointing to the side in one direction and then you go down to kind of the next line flip it over page three more steps follow the arrows but we have page four once we're done with that we move on to the next sheet of paper which has five six seven and eight and then we'll be finished but what are we going to need to put this together some of the tools that i'll use pliers pliers are very helpful i have a flat nose set of pliers and this is from the fascinations kit and i have a long needle nose pliers they can get into a lot of areas and hold on to long parts these do not have any ridges on the inside so they do not scratch up the kits as you work with them and they're spring loaded which is nice Side cutters or flush cutters are, in my opinion, opinion, essential. You can do these kits without them. 
but it is so very very nice to have something to cut the parts off of the tree nice and quick and even and easy. Tweezers are very helpful. They're very small and easy to manage. They're great for holding on the small parts, great for making small bins, great for twisting and bending some of the tabs. I like to have an assortment of different kinds. I have a fairly normal set of tweezers, a thinner set, and a couple of sets with very pointed ends for getting into very small areas. Round nose or ring pliers are very useful for shaping some of the curved parts. You can just get the metal in between there and just slowly bend it and curve it for all of the odd shaped areas of your kit. There's a number of different things you can use to make these cylinder shaped and round parts. I have a bunch of dowel rods that I've used, a couple of them sharpened for making cone shapes. I've also picked up some step mandrels that have different size round areas or a in very inexpensive drill bit set. This is a set that I got very cheaply that I honestly would never use to actually drill with but there's a lot of different sizes you can use. It can also be very useful to have a set of beads different sizes on hand or marbles or ball bearings. These can be used to shape dome shaped parts, ball shaped parts. I occasionally find it useful to have these locking type pliers. I've heard them called locking clamps, Kelly clamps, forceps, but they can be very handy for holding on to some parts and locking them so that you don't have to worry about applying pressure while you guide them into place. And it can also be very useful for reaching into very tight areas to grab a hold of things. We've got our instructions, the metal sheets, some tools. Let's put it together. A bead is a good way to get started shaping the first part. It can sometimes take some experimentation to find the right size rod or drill bit for the job. The 3 seconds drill bit was just a tad small, but it allowed me to pinch down and curve the ends well. I goofed up and put part 10 on upside down. By the time I figured it out, everything was attached. I did not want to break anything trying to pull it off and turn it.
part 13 was difficult to hold into place so that I could twist the tabs. Same with part 21 later. Some of these tabs are covered and difficult to get to. I did not realize it until later, but I missed part 29.
Part 34 took a lot of coaxing to get the sides bent down. They seemed to not want to bend all the way. I believe that the edges were connected in such a way that it caused the part to sort of bow into shape. It is usually a good idea to bend tabs so that they all point the same way towards the next connection. It helps them line up with their slots. So many of the tabs in this kit are partially hidden behind other parts. It is good to have some thin end tool to get them on. They cannot all be accessed directly. Starting with 38, many of the pieces are oddly shaped and will require some experimentation to find the right way to bend and shape them. It was at this point that I realized I'd missed part 29. The instructions do not say which way to put the engraved side on part 39 and 40. On 39, the sides are folded down towards the unengraved side. Both parts are shown with the engraved side up in the instructions. Sometimes with difficult parts, I will lightly twist one or two tabs to hold them in place while I line up and bend over the remaining tabs, then come back, straighten, then bend over the twisted tabs.
It took me a while to coax this assembly between these sort of wings and line up the tabs. More bending, flexing, and coaxing. This video has been edited. I have not shown all the attempts, adjustment, and retries to get all the parts to fit. I also clip out some repetitive steps. It may make it look like this kit came together easier than it did. Keep in mind, there's a lot of bending and adjusting to make parts fit. Work slowly, be patient, and take your time. These two sides of the wheel come together just the same as the two sides of the back wheel. The inner components differ slightly. At first, I did not understand what the directions meant by make sure the arrow mark is not on this side. But then I realized in the middle of the wheel, on one side is a small arrow.
be sure that both arrows are pointing the same way when you put the two halves of the wheel together. The instructions say to twist the tabs holding on the wheel, but I opted to bend them over. I decided to bend over the tabs connecting part 63 to 64 because of the lack of space. I did not want to have twisted tabs getting in the way of closing up. The handlebars were a real tight fit. It was not plainly clear, but I needed to bend the flap with the two tabs on it at more of an open angle and not 90 degrees to make the thing fit. The last few parts of this kit were to me the hardest. I spent a lot of time adjusting parts trying to find the right way for them to fit.
It took me longer than it should have to put on this front piece. I was trying to attach one of the tabs to the wrong spot and was confused as to why it wouldn't fit. On part 76 and 79, only bend the corners a little bit. It is supposed to be bent a little, but the tabs are straight as if it was not to be bent at all. The bend on 77 and 80 is also very subtle. I give you the Kawasaki Ninja. The very, very neat kit once it's done. And this is my second Iconics kit. And the first half of this kit is very straightforward. It's just simple shape, circles, you know, putting some things together, just like many other kits. About halfway, maybe a little more than halfway, once you start dealing with some of the more complicated shapes, then it gets difficult. And the very last few parts and pieces took quite a while. It probably took two, three hours just to do the last one third of this kit perhaps just because it takes some time to figure out exactly how you're supposed to shape this to make it fit. And exactly how this little curve under here and on either side is supposed to go. It takes time just like any other kit. This takes time and this being an Iconics kit it's larger, has greater detail so it takes a little bit more to put it together. It is a bit of a test in patience many of the kits are looks wonderful when it's done it's got little bits of green in it which adds some more detail and it looks great on the shelf as always if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below thank you for watching and keep on keeping on